and if you are talking about the maximum value of static friction it is considered as a starting friction or limiting friction starting friction or limiting friction we are using these words so what we are actually trying to say when the force of friction is going to exceed or like when the force pushing on the box that means we are talking about the applied force okay now let's see here when we are just apply a force okay look at the variation in the graph first the static friction going to be there hello everyone in this section we are going to discuss about the static friction and sliding friction and we are going to solve questions also so first we are going to talk about the static friction first of all you should understand that the word static it implies for the object whenever they are at the rest so can we say that when the object are placed at the rest or when they are at the stationary condition the static friction is going to exist at that time so here it says that a static friction is the force between two surface in contact that tends to prevent a stationary object to start moving why we are saying that between two surfaces in contact obviously friction force is going to act when we are taking two uh, when we are taking an object and when we are going to place the object on the surface so that's why the two surfaces will be there and they should be in contact because friction force it's a kind of contact force right it tends to prevent a stationary object so that it's not going to come in the condition of motion so just imagine this is a surface i am placing an object on it i am applying a force on it so i am writing here f applied friction force is going to act in the opposite direction of the motion so here you are able to see that the object is at the rest okay it's not moving so can we say that in this case of static friction is greater than to the f applied or the applied force in other words static friction is a force exerted on an object at rest so static friction is going to uh, act whenever the object are placed at the rest condition that prevents the object from sliding so you can use this definition or this whatever you feel that it will be easy for you for the memorizing purpose you can use the definition next point let's see what we have it says that the maximum static friction okay is called the static friction or limiting friction so here the object is placed we are applying a force on it so this is a f applied here the static friction is going to act the maximum static friction if we are talking about the maximum value of static friction it is considered as a starting friction or limiting friction starting friction or limiting friction we are using these words it is the amount of force that must be overcome to start a stationary object to move it is the amount of force that must be overcome to start a stationary object to move okay so if the question came the dry down the maximum value of static friction so you have to write down that it's considered as a starting friction or limiting friction it's the amount of force that is going to overcome the stationary position to come in the starting one or to come in the movement or motion next sliding friction or dynamic friction sliding friction or dynamic they both are same when the force pushing on the force is larger okay then the maximum static friction force the box begin to slide so what we are actually trying to say when the force of friction is going to exceed or like when the force pushing on the box that means we are talking about the applied force okay so when we are going to exceed the applied of force which is larger than the maximum static friction if you are taking that the maximum friction uh, friction at like 5 newton and you are just moving like you are applying a 6 newton so in that case the value the box whatever box you are taking it will start sliding it will going to come in the condition of motion static friction force the box begin to slide so this is a box f applied you are applying a greater force as compared to the starting limiting friction okay so in that case friction is going to act here and now just imagine the box will start sliding now it will move okay it's going to come in the motion so i'm writing here this is motion this is about the sliding friction everyone okay next point when the box is sliding a different frictional force acts on the box so it's a very but obvious thing as we are telling you that uh, when the box will start sliding when the box will start sliding 
when we are applying a greater amount of force okay so just imagine uh, like i am drawing here you are applying a 15 newton force and here it's 11 newton so that means you are exceeding the value of starting friction that's why the box will start sliding so at the time the frictional force which is going to act on it is it is considered as a sliding friction next we have the magnitude of the applied force is usually greater than to the uh, that of the sliding friction that's why we all know that in which direction uh, the object is moving or the box is moving we have to take that means the applied force is actually higher and that's why the motion direction which we are going to take it's always in the direction of the applied force which is greater in magnitude so the magnitude of the applied force is actually greater than to the sliding friction unlike static friction the magnitude of sliding friction does not change if you push on the box harder okay so it will going to show you the constant value as long as, uh, as, long as the object is sliding now just imagine that the box is start sliding because uh, the, uh, the force which you have applied it's a sufficient so that the object will going to come in the motion the force of sliding friction is constant so when the object will start sliding the sliding friction value it's going to show you the constant value next point if the force you apply is greater than sliding friction obviously in that case the box will start sliding okay so the box speeds up as it slides it's a very but obvious thing you are taking a ball you are taking a box and now you will just apply a force on it the object will start sliding on the surface you are actually applying a force on it now just imagine uh, the mass of the object is quite less and you are just applying a force on it on a magnitude you are just applying a simple magnitude a constant magnitude so the box will slide in a constant speed okay now if you will just speed up you will just increase the applied force so in that case the box will also going to speed up if the force you apply is equal to the sliding friction the blocks slide with a constant speed obviously if you are applying this equal amount of force if you are apply a magnitude of force which is a constant one so in that case the box will going to start it's uh, going to slide with a constant speed but if you are going to exceed the value of force just imagine please imagine this case you are taking object you are just applying a force on it it will start sliding now what is going to happen someone will going to came and again the person is also going to apply the force so the applied force is now exceeded right the greater amount of force you are applying so obviously the box will going to speed up this is what we are trying to tell you next we have sliding friction is smaller than static friction why because static friction it's a kind of friction which is uh, which is going to act whenever the object are at the rest condition because it prevent so that object is not going to come in the motion now in the static friction when the object is placed at the rest condition the interlocking the irregularities between the two surfaces is quite high the interlocking is quite high so that means the value of friction is quite high right now let's talk about the sliding friction when the object will start sliding on the surface it's not getting the sufficient time so that the proper interlocking will going to be happen there so that's why the sliding friction having a less value as compared to the static one Static friction is not created by motion, obviously, because it's going to act whenever the object are at the rest. But it results from the interlocking of the heels and valleys. We know that the causes of friction is mainly because of the interlocking of the two, two surfaces is going to happen. Though both surfaces have number of heels and valleys, and then when they are going to press on each other, they will going to interlock, and that's why the friction will going to be generated. When the box starts sliding, the contact point on its surface do not get enough time to lock into the uh, contact points on the floor. So, if it's at the rest, okay, number of heels and valleys, so the interlocking should be properly. So, I'm writing here when the object is at the rest. Now, here the object will start sliding. So, just imagine the contact point. It's also going to change, okay, because it's in a motion it's sliding so it's not going to get enough time to lock into the another surface and that's why the value of the static is quite high as compared to the value of sliding one so the sliding friction is slightly smaller than the static friction so we can write here uh, static friction is greater than to the sliding friction okay uh, static is greater than to the sliding one 
नेक्स्ट वे हैव द इम्पॉर्टेंट नोट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द स्लाइडिंग फ्रिक्शन इज अपोजिट टू द अप्लाइड फोर्स ऑब्वियसली वी नो दैट फ्रिक्शन इट्स अ रेजिस्टिव फोर्स सो द डायरेक्शन ऑफ फ्रिक्शन इज गोइंग टू एक्ट टूवर्ड्स द अपोजिट डायरेक्शन टू द अप्लाइड वन बिकॉज अप्लाइड फोर्स in uh, wind, uh, like in which direction we are uh, applying a force the object will start moving in the da- uh, in that direction only also the direction of sliding friction is always opposite to the motion of the sliding object variation of friction with applied force here we are going to show you a graph okay this is applied force which we are going to take on x axis so here i am writing this is a x axis and here we have a y axis and this is a frictional force now let's see here when we are just apply a force okay look at the variation in the graph first the static friction going to be there because you are apply a force but not sufficient amount of force we have applied so that the object is going to come in the motion when we are going to cross the uh, limiting friction and then the maximum static friction will going to came and then you are going to apply the force which is higher in the magnitude to the apply, uh, maximum static friction in that case the object will start sliding so this graph is actually going to tell you about the whole point okay everyone now let's move here we have some question the first one two blocks a and b are released at the top of a rough inclined plane so that a slides along the plane and b falls down freely we have an inclined plane like this okay now we will just uh, drop two blocks a and b we are taking a it's going to slide right we will take a block b and it's just going to show you free fall in that case the velocity of b it's quite high because uh, the motion it's actually going to act in the direction of acceleration and that's why it speeds up so which will have higher velocity on reaching the ground we will check on the b option this is the correct answer of our question next let's see what we have next question why does a horse need to pull harder during the first few steps in pulling the cart see because first of all static friction is acting okay then that's why he uh, he have to pull hard so that it will going to come in the sliding one so static friction is greater than sliding friction we have to take a option this is the correct answer of our question okay next question let's see next question says that a box is being pushed horizontally along a rough surface and a constant acceleration is achieved okay the box is moving along a horizontal surface and the value of acceleration is constant if the push is stopped now you are not applying a force on it so the box will going to come obviously if you are not applying a force on it the speed will going to decrease and then suddenly the ball will going uh, the object whatever objects we are taking it will going to come at the rest condition so first the speed the velocity will going to slow down and then finally stop a option this is the correct answer of our question okay so now you are able to understand that the questions are easy first of all we have to read the statement and then we have to understand the question then we have to read all the option then we have to take on the correct one continue to move at a constant speed no because we are not applying a force on it now okay continue to accelerate at a lower rate no this is also not the answer stop immediately immediately stop it's not possible okay because constant acceleration we are taking and it's moving along a rough surface next question let's see what we have read the given statements and choose a correct option let's see what is the first one when static friction acts there is no loss of mechanical energy obviously because at the rest the object is also not moving so if it's not moving it's not going to change its uh, position it's not going to come in the motion so energy is not going to be converted so there is no loss of mechanical energy it's a stored energy statement 2 when kinetic energy acts between two bodies there is no loss uh, there is loss of mechanical energy obviously yes whenever the object are going to come in the motion they are actually going to show you kinetic energy so in that case when the kinetic energy acts between two bodies when it's going to act whenever the objects are in motion there is loss of mechanical energy obviously the mechanical energy will going to lose its value because now it's going to show you the motion so the energy is actually going to use when the object is in a motion So first and two, they both are correct. But second is not going to explain you about the first one correctly, and that's why both statements one and two are true. But statement two is not the correct explanation of statement one. B option, this is the correct answer of our question. Now let's move on the next one. Next question. Analyze the given statement and choose the correct option. Statement one: Static friction is self-adjusting force. Yes, it's a self. 
adjusting force actually friction it's a self ad adjusting force the magnitude of static friction is less than the applied force no the static friction the magnitude of static friction is greater than to the applied force and that's why object is going to remain at the rest condition first it's a true second it's a false one and it's given here in the c option statement one is true and statement two is false Take on the C option. C, it's the correct answer of our question.